Okay, what you're looking at is a foundation in our backyard, but this video is from exactly one year ago. Mm -hmm. And if you look closely, Taylor is, is here with me. You could see Taylor. And is that Ryan setting up the radiant floor? I think I was setting up the radiant floor, but Ooh. Ryan might have been helping me. Right. Taylor <laughs> did the whole design here. I Taylor. did everything. <laughs> Taylor did the design. Now, here we are one year later. This is recently. This is just like about a week ago. And you hired a gentleman named Brett Pulliam to build this barn. How did you find Brett? Uh, word of mouth. He has no internet presence. Yeah, and not now. You know, soon. we just found him on Instagram. He's got a private Instagram profile. And this is his friend Andre here that's um, helping offload these uh, scarf joint beams. And yeah, what do you what do you want to say? You helped design this. What you designed this and had, I mean, I didn't just help design it. I, mean, I designed, designed it. it. But I'm saying like you helped him. You designed it. I guided him. <laughs> I told him what I wanted. And I said, what was your inspiration? He knew where to this? put the pins in the wood. What was and your inspiration <laughs> for designing this? I saw, um, I was looking at timber frame horse barns and I found some four stall or actually eight stall horse barns. I decided to make this a little bit half like ample sites, tack room, a wash stall and four stalls. Um, when I've, um, you know, the horse that I keep now, she lives outside most of the time. And I think like it's healthier for them to be outside most of the time anyway so the barn is really just there for like stall rest inclement weather or you know for any reason that you might need a stall but um i think for the most part she'll be outside but anyway we i designed it to be really um traditional yeah and brett is a traditional barn builder and brett um yeah he's a timber frame maestro and um, he actually built a barn for a friend of mine and we were originally, um, going to have a, um, like a barn raising oh, where right. we were going to invite friends. But, you know, with COVID, I just, I, I just didn't want to be responsible for any sort of like COVID transmission or anyone yeah. maybe so having. a year ago, we were going to invite a yeah. bunch of friends, Taylor found somebody that was a uh, a joint expert, a barn, barn and building. Really an, a true artist. I mean, I really, I definitely would like to connect with him in the future on a project because he does lots of live edge where he just like peels the bark and uses, right. you know, full on What is his name? So people can look his name is Mez Rockbridge Timber Frames. Hey guys, just a 30 second ad break. I just wanted to remind everybody that the razor blade t-shirt is still available we're going to be selling this for just a limited time designed and put together by adam who runs the website so adam thank you very much and once again everybody thank you for the love and support everybody's been really great supporting the website so thank you very much click the link in the description below respect so we were going to have a bunch of people and Mez was going to be the director, but we decided just because of time and COVID. I mean, we could still Brett. do that in the future, though. Right, like, yeah, that's still an option. Absolutely. I would, I mean, I like, hey, 40 acres. Like, I am yeah. all about putting more timber frames. I yeah. want to do some Let's more do like something. eco, eco-centric type of buildings or, mm -hmm. you know, just, I like combining. I like that this is something that is like, it's an old school method, you know. Is there a reason kind of why is, we picked pine? Well, pine is plentiful. This is white pine. This is plentiful in our area. So, like in where Mez is from in in Rockbridge County, Virginia, oak is everywhere. So, so we would well if we load that. But yeah, I like this design just because it's like it's simple, it's straightforward, it's strong. Um, I like the modular aspect of it, and I like that it's kind of like perfected it's got great proportions you know i love the roof pitch what is the roof pitch a couple roof, people asked the me. roof pitch is 10 12. 10 12 it's steeper than the barn that yeah Kyle built, right? it's a lot steep i think your bridge might be 8 12. right which is still a really nice pitch but i i, I love i guess the dramatic effect of like yeah. a high roof pitch it kind of has like a cathedral vibe yeah certainly so well just to get back to some technical stuff uh, Andre and, and Brett right now are building the hallway bents. In the very beginning, I was away for a while, and when I came back, they were already building those 
side bents. They doing it. They doing it in pieces. Yeah. Right? What they did was build a lot of smaller bites, and then they started doing larger assemblies from that. But they yeah. built like the center aisle with the the highest point, the peak. Mm -hmm. They. Um, oh, look at that! I don't know what that is, but that's uh, his his name, and it's just built by him and Andre. The date they started, the date they're assembling it. That's adorable. It faces up in the air on one of the mm. large bends in the middle. That's cool. I love that. Look at him. He's so cute. He was so nervous. So the funny thing about Brett, I love Brett, but every conversation was like, oh, my God, my stomach's in a knot. We he got this going on. He did such a good on. job, though. <laughs> he did such a good job. I was like, Brett, I have faith in you. Like, you can't mess it up. And I was joking with him like he's the old detective. He's like, this is my last job. This is Because he said this will be the last one I built. And then no, it's talking. not. He's the type of guy who's not, he's gonna, not going to stop until he drops dead with a chisel in his hand. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, that's what I feel. I mean, obviously, I would love for him to, like, be healthy, but, you know. So he's building what they can without the crane. He's getting really ready for the crane. Yeah. Uh, he's making all these sections that they could build laying on the ground, and he obviously is laying them out in a way that when the crane picks them up, they just have to spin them 90 degrees one way, 90 degrees the other way. But you could see how him and Andre are assembling all these center hallway bents they're getting all the the knee braces in place and then they ratchet them tightly mm -hmm. and only once they're tight and then he does a little bit of uh, he does a, a little bit of diagonal squaring up with the ruler and then they just put the pegs in place it's amazing you'll see once they start standing everything up they use the level maybe once or twice and that's it because once there's a level bent then everything is level off of it. Yeah. They hardly ever use the level. It's pretty crazy. Well, the cool thing is, is like, this is, Brett cut everything by himself. That's he was true. able to maneuver all of these timbers with a machine. And his shop, I have to say, is about a third the size of your shop. And he's got maybe like some wood storage outside, but he's yeah. got a really low ceiling. And he really like uses the space super efficiently. Look at these scarf joints. So, so, you know, cool. it's the type of thing where, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can do it. And, yeah, the scarf joints are great. I mean, he was he was saying, are you okay with scarf joints? Because I guess some people would not want jointed right. timbers. But My buddy Matt sent me a picture the other day of 40-foot long beams that they have ready for a barn they're building somewhere yeah. in Pennsylvania. But I mean, this, I guess, saves a lot on cost. And it, it is hard you know, especially during COVID, to find the timbers that are the size yeah. that you want. No, I so think they look great. I think they look great, too. I'm really happy with them. And, um, you know, I kind of, um, you know, I gave Brett, like, a basic idea of what I wanted. And some, I, I drew out a bent originally, just like a whole cross section with the peak and everything. And he fine-tuned it and created it into, like, a real, you know, solid structure. So, um, in the end, you'll hear Brett talk at the, after we talk, there's about seven or eight minutes of him just, yeah. I mean, this me. is one of the more, I mean, based on his portfolio, this is like really one of the more simple things he's done. He's, he probably could do this in his sleep. He, um, has such a tremendous amount of like more complex frames that mm -hmm. have like beautiful and, you know, more elaborate truss systems, you truss th I designs. I saw something with arches in it. Did they do a couple of Lots them? of arches. Um, but, you know, Jimmy and I are talking, like, we, we have this, like, long-term goal of putting a, a brand new house on the property, but something that is, like, in the style of what's always been there. Mm -hmm. And we would love to, you know, use this timber frame structure. So this as the house structure. And this right. is really, like, kind of the first... Um, check out room. and the funny story with this crane guy so he came in at the final hour like literally 7 a.m the day we were supposed to put the building up because the previous crane guy they had this whole thing so in the state where um you know all the state checked. police were like setting up checkpoints and, and they red tagged it. our crane guy so he said i can't drive you know i'm i'm out of commission till i fix this little detail on my truck and you know this guy came in last minute and um save the day and he turned out to be a really great guy i was nice like guy. this is this is the type of crane person i would want on every job and this is being the first bent they wanted to make sure obviously that it was level but it was the first and only time i've seen them use a level you'll see them use a level one other time but uh once they get it level and stable and 
everything is built off of it. And I was so amazed that Brett was so on point with all of his measurements. He didn't have to adjust anything on set. He did. There was one thing. There was one little joint that held him up for a minute, but it wasn't. It it took him a minute to get out of the, you know, to get out of the woods. Yeah, it was just. And the funny thing was, he was like, "Your, your foundation is an inch and a half out of square," and I was like, "Is that typical?" And I think he was trying to be nice, and he's like, "Well, I have seen it worse, but, (laughs) you know, he he was like, it's not something we can't work with, but, it, you know." And by the way, the foundation was built a year ago by, what was his name? I don't know if we should say it since his thing oh. was a year, well, a, it was a while inch ago. and a half out of square. Maybe. A gentleman up here named Ed Reinhardt. He did a nice job. He was easy to work with. And yeah, uh, Taylor laid out all of the radiant floor. Yeah, he loved how complicated my design was. I said <laughs> I wanted to pr- depress center to put... Um, rubber pavers, he told me. It was like... Yeah, it was a little complicated, oh, but it's all worked out. Yeah, you're crazy. Come back next time. <laughs> like, we don't have time for that. It's it's November. We got to pour this concrete. Uh, whatever. But you know what? I came up... I had a workaround. So you'll see, which is... This is so uncommon, but I did so much research. And instead of doing a depressed center, I used a super high PSI Which concrete. Which you could see right under his feet, right there. See how there's these little channels that there's like... There's one inch, one and one half inch higher, right, where all the yeah, interior Yeah, one and a half inch, which is the same as like 40 millimeters. High pressurized this. concrete, and that space in the middle will take all the rubber pavers. Yeah, so the space in the middle is going to be the rubber pavers. I left the two ends open just for water drainage until we get the roof on and put the pavers down, but... Um, I used a super high strength um, self-leveling patching concrete and you know it was from a company called Euclid Chemical. They were super nice on the phone. Um, the concrete was stupid expensive but it was kind of maybe I feel like it would have been less than if they had done all the form work to do a depressed center so I think we saved on that but um, my uh, excavator friend came and we did the you know the self-leveling concrete together. You could see the difference there. That one and yeah, a half foot a, wide strip. Yeah, there's a little line of no, differentiation. That's, that's going to be there, hidden in a wall eventually. Yeah, it'll be hidden within the wall, and um, but it came out really good. When we did like a little troweling on top, um, it cures pretty fast, and it worked out really well. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So and you could see was, it right there on that. Track. Everyone was surprised. They thought I was crazy, and I said, "No, this is going to work." And they were right like, there, You're that's the center aisle. You effing up a whole foundation. It worked. I mean, so far it's There's working. There's that signature beam that goes up. That's uh, the second to the second bend from the uh, from the south side of the building. And these pegs. Uh, at one point, Brett explained to me these pegs were all oak pegs that he buys so he basically buys like a bag of uh, bag of pegs like a bag of nails and th- i asked him about this whole crew i was like what's the deal with the crew and he was like they've all helped at one point one guy is his son and he's a total pro but you know one guy was like a retired correctional officer that was a friend of his like everyone's just like really there to lift stuff so this is a really i mean aside from the cutting part this is a really simple structure that like yeah it seemed like i mean everybody was basically muscle you know, but there was a couple of guys there that are, if you are know used how to, to work with them and you know mark with a pencil and, and yeah. cut straight when you need to there was an experienced crew they they've all it, helped somewhat them. yeah pretty experienced but I'm just saying, I think it's cool, like, if you wanted to do something like this on a smaller scale, like build a little shed, like, it's totally doable. It's obvious how easy it goes together as long as all your measurements are correct. I just mm-hmm. looked at the, uh, I looked at how perfect and all the lines are dead straight. Like, for They're instance, dead straight. When, you put, when he puts the peaks on the roof in a minute, you'll see the crane adding all the peaks right. on the roof. So and then the extra roof joists, uh, the rafters that come down to the gables, you can, it looks like one long piece and they're all two pieces. Okay, this is the bent that's getting put in place for the south entrance of the building. And, yeah, uh, I mean, Brett is a badass. <laughs> He's the real deal. And you see there was a bolt there, so instead of grinding the bolt off, he just put a little pocket in the bottom of the, yeah. the upright. He's very efficient too. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't, um... He doesn't beat around the bush with some stuff like to, you know, he make things really efficient. Like he suggested a couple things that were like money saving things like why don't you do flyover joists instead of cutting them in 
and mm -hmm. you know is I that think, the ones that get and that on works top? well yeah and that works well because our beams that go down the long way the, the 48 feet they all line up with the flyover joist so um, You're gonna have to show me what the flyover joists are. Yeah, because you guys have been talking about this. Pretty much towards the end, but Brett is a super pro. Look at him; he's so happy. He's happy to be done. Well, yeah, we're getting done. This is. Uh, I think this is all still day one. By the way, it took him three days to put it together, but three light days. They weren't. They weren't full. Just the crane came late. And the second day, yeah, they, they did what they could until there was no crane, because there was no crane on day two. On day ten to three, four, pretty the much. crane came back. Ten to four. And those are those beams that were scarf joined together that are going on the top. There's actually four of them that long. And these are the first two. I mean, look at these guys standing up there. I and wish they I all had there. fall protection on. Everybody had fall protection. Yeah, no, they were double harnessed and everything. Or yeah so you could see a little bit of the land thank you to sean for being the drone operator oh my god what an amazing yeah sean's amazing we love you sean and uh so they're banging in the the joists and the and are they knee braces is that look what they how call? straight my fence is <laughs> i laid that out myself laying in the joints and the knee braces as they go kind of left to right it was amazing. He had a hundred and something. You could probably do the quick math, but there was about 125 knee braces. Is that what they called? Oh, it was like a stupid amount of knee braces. He said, I've never had this many for a barn. But Well, he said he usually would do them only on the outside walls, but for, for some reason he kind of made the mistake of starting to carve them for the inside, and he's like, oh, I'll just keep going. So there's a lot more knee braces than he said typically would be in a building like this. Yeah. No, he did say that. But they look good. And obviously... This is a very windy thoroughfare on the property. The wind comes through here in the winter pretty heavy, so I'm happy that there's more knee braces than less. And now this is the first uh, roof rafter. Yeah, they did a two-piece rafter. Everyone was thinking I was doing like a monitor-style barn, but they hid the seam for the rafter in the center of the post. Um, so right there you see there's like a two-inch notch on each side. And I guess they use some timber lock screws. They use like two giant six-inch timber lock screws they were, I think to they were more attach like 10 them. Inch. Oh, maybe they were 10 inch. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the whole roof is all timber locked in. Yeah, what a great shot. I mean, I wanted to be up there with them. Yeah, what, it, what is amazing is that he laid out everything in his shop. Yeah. They never broke out the ruler or the T-square ever. His everything shop is was smaller than your shop in the city. Yeah. It's crazy. Everything. But it had an outdoor area. So. Every single line is on every beam. So. so, but every piece was probably no longer than 12 feet. Yeah. Maybe those no, well, jointed they, those, beams were a little bit longer, like they were maybe 20 feet each, but. No, how long 15? is that piece that goes up each center bent, the big H's that went up first? Okay, those were 26 feet. Yeah, so those so are all those actual were the longest, full on long. 25 longest. feet or something, but yeah. So all those uprights in that center hallway are all one piece. But that's the type of thing you can leave outside, and if you're working in the summer, it's pretty Yeah. Pretty fun. Like. Oh, you're talking about like size for as far as working in a shop? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if he has the outdoor he area. He had those in his driveway, and he would be cutting them. I'm, I really am pissed that I didn't go up. Um, we didn't get a chance to go to his shop. Hang and out him. with him while he was working. He said I could come up and do some chiseling and whatnot. But you I, was know, I feel like some... this is not the last barn that we're going to no. do. I was hoping to go and get some video of him chiseling, but I just didn't know when I was going to be able to do it. And since I had all this, I figured I'd just throw this video together. Yeah. But Brett has like such an incredible portfolio of work, and it's funny like he doesn't have any of it online, and he probably will now. He hopefully will now. I mean, his kids are super tech savvy, so I'm hoping that they do him a solid and make him a website. But yeah. Um, well, he doesn't seem like the guy that needs the work. Yeah, no, he doesn't need the work. He gets he does really well with word of mouth, but and I think he likes his uh, rhythm of being just like a yeah two man crew. Yeah. So Andre, the guy with the long hair, the only one wearing the hard hat, is pretty much his number one. Andre is like. You know, I just, when I, I met Andres, him, I was like, I super trust you. Like, you seem like you know what you're doing. I'm I'm impressed, so. Yeah, he says he does his own barns, too. Yeah. So here, you see those little stoppers they put. They kept moving the stoppers down the line to the next pencil line. They put little stoppers on there, so. I mean, The relationship cool. of the end of that truss to the edge of the beam 
is critical because the next piece that's going to go to carry all the way down to the top of the edge, the edge of the soffit, is going to fill in the negative space. So you'll see he put the little two inch stopper blocks. Has anyone done a timber framing video like this? I feel like this is the coolest timber framing video I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not know. trying to like compliment you right now because I usually uh, I ha I'm your number one troll. Yeah, you are. I am your number one troll. But you haven't seen any of this footage though right now. I haven't seen any of this footage and I'm like really impressed. I'm like, I would watch this if I was alone. Right. <laughs> okay. So I'm just saying it's pretty good. I had the GoPro clipped to the crane. You did a good job. It's a block, a block attacker right there. And then this is Sean uh, broke out the drone. He used my drone, but I had no idea how to use it very well. And he did all the drone shots. I did a couple oh, of the drone Sean shots is at the so end. so tech savvy. He so, was like, I do, I do uh, 3D scanning of everything. Yeah, and we're talking like about Sean, me. who's uh, oh, yeah. the, the, I think he's number one Mr. over Shaper. at Shaper, the tool with the, the router with the CNC in it. So here uh, is the last rafter point going in. I, I wish I could technically remember the names of all these things. Well, what would you call that? The rafter joist? What is that? What, the rafter? Yeah, that's those are the rafters. That's like the baby part of the rafter, and then there's like a tail part. The baby, that's technical term? The baby technical the, part. <laughs> the, tech the, the baby and the tail I'm part. I'm my fourth glass of wine, but the technical <laughs> part is the baby part of the rafter. This is where it's born in the point. So now the point here, of convergence. So here, this is the the side of the bents, the left and right side, and the uh, the beam that goes across those is going to carry the lower part of the rafters, or the bottom part of the tail, as now defined as the tail of the rafter. Yeah, and then there's going to be a little lean too. So these guys, since they had the crane there, they used the crane as often as possible, but occasionally. Uh, they didn't necessarily need well, to have, use the crane. You can see this little lift right here. So that, if they that have was the little beams the beam. that goes in, yeah. in between those two, they were able to use the lift. But they, I mean, what an efficient crew. No one seemed stressed. Everyone no. just seemed like they were working yeah, at a was... really good pace. Brett estimated all of his time super efficiently. And everyone was um, complete yeah. early in the afternoon, in the late yeah. afternoon. Everybody but, you know. Yeah. They were done before five and everyone was happy and like, you know, no this drama. This was three days worth of work. No one was throwing any uh, hammers or no whatever. No hammer and, throws. Yeah. So uh, this is 12 by 12 by 12 So these cubes. are, yeah, I worked on, on pretty much 12 on center, but um, the overall dimensions for the exterior of the frame are 36 by 48. Mm -hmm. Now, so, did you tell me like a, a, a small barn would have 10 by 10 cubes and this one has 12 well, by 12, just a little bit more comfortable? For, I, I even now I'm like, I wish I went bigger, yeah. but I wish I went on 14s instead of 12, but whatever. The um, tip, a typical horse stall, horse stall is 12 by 12 right. and 10 by 10 for a small horse pony style, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it seems f huge. And then you, you develop yeah, the second I mean, floor there. You have a whole second floor, which is going to be plenty of room yeah. there. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I look at it like if you're an animal and you're meant to like cover miles of earth, like throughout the day, like a 12 by 12 stall, like, I don't know. But so what I, what I do plan to do, and this will be in like future videos, but um, the, the actual stall fronts and the sides, I plan to have a um, removable stall wall mm -hmm. so that if you wanted to have one horse could two have two stalls, large stalls. So a 24 by 12 for you one know, horse. Usually they do that for like foaling and stuff, but what is foaling mother and baby? Oh yeah. For like if, if the um, mom is giving birth to a baby and she needs to have a foal in her stall for, you know, right. before they do weaning. But, um, but yeah, that's, um, you know, if there's only two horses that need to access it or no, who knows, maybe we'll have goats and we'll live in a stall. Right. You never know. Right. But, um, but yeah, so this lean to, I actually designed it so that it would step down with the slope of the hill. So right. the lean to, the floor of the lean to is about a foot lower than the, the floor of the barn. So um, it has like a nice, I like that it flows with the earth and I, and you know, I'm hoping that, um, you know, we just have like a nice little hill sloping down there yeah that needs to be fixed up a little bit it's a little steep yeah 
yeah, a little excavation work or whatever, but. Mm -hmm. And when the crane had to go, he used this skid steer with this picker upper on the front. It extends, so he was able to pick up a considerable amount of stuff with it. But right there, that slope was pretty steep, so you had to be careful going up and around it. Anyway, this is the last one of the lean-to. And now, the talk a little bit about the second floor. and. So the second floor, right now, my initial plan was to have it be a hayloft, but because it's such a beautiful, nice quality building, I'm... My ultimate goal is to have an apartment above there and mm -hmm. either keep it as a guest house for people that come and visit or have it be, um, you know, maybe Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Something. Or. Something. Yeah. Or like caretaker or right. art studio. I mean, I don't really know. Like, we, I don't know like where life is going at this point, but I know that like as a design project, I just want to create something um, you know, just a nice place to stay, nice modern amenities and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just simple, efficient and, um, yeah, have an apartment and then below there's basically three 12 by 12 square components that I set aside to be a tack room, a mm -hmm. bathroom and like a, you know, just a place to like kind of clean up so you and have store, an, your, you, you store have some a, of the feed. That could be an apartment in and of itself too, right? There's radiant I mean, heat in the left side there. and So I did actually, so this is cool. I did um, two zones for the radiant heat and Mo at um, Mo's Plumbing and Heating mm -hmm. in whatever. Mo did the barn. Mo Hirsch. Mo Hirsch. He helped me. He actually inspired me because originally this was just going to be a cold barn. So... Um, you know, when Mo said, oh, are you going to do radiant heat? And I was like, I don't know how to do that. And he was like, well, you should do it. And you looked on YouTube. Plumbing, and I was like, I really want to do it. And I was, I was waiting for someone to say, I'm crazy. Don't do it. And, um, but instead Mo was like, you could do it. You should do it. And it's easy. Like arts and crafts, like I'll just guide you. So he basically helped me get set up with like an account with supply house. Um, you know, I ordered all my plumbing parts through them all my pecs and you know I feel I did everything like top of the line of, according to Mo and um, I did um, I ordered Eupanor pecs and I did the um, two heating zones actually three technically but I did a ter thermal break between two heating zones so I put pecs in the aisle and the wash stall just to have it I doubt I'll ever use it but if you anyone could if you wanted to heat it, you could, but I also put a second um, manifold, and it's like a, a three-loop manifold, but um, as there's a second manifold for the little tack room bathroom area, and the bathroom is on its own loop, and the tack room is on its own two loops, and um, so that's the area that's going to like maintain, you know, above freezing during the winter, and um, I also put in automatic waterer like oh, just yeah. infrastructure yeah. just everything is like in slab plumbing but i i buried some in in um automatic waterer plumbing for the a stalls. nelson waterer for the horse stalls and also for the pasture when i was doing all this digging uh for the foundation so the yard was there was a hole there looked like it was for a skyscraper yeah it was awesome um so so after, I mean, the idea for that was just, you know, have convenience and like right. no, you clean just, and easy The complications water. you set up for the future and the future is easier, but you, do, yeah. you deal with the complications. Yeah. So we put that in, but we roughed those in and um, what oh, else? I roughed in all the plumbing for the Brett, barn. Brett, let me la bang in the last peg. So this oh, is the last really ceremonial sweet. peg. I would have let you do it, but you weren't around. I know. I wasn't around for a very specific reason, though. I had some, I had yeah, like a guessed. dog. Well, uh, didn't this, I have? No, this is when you Oh, yeah, guessed. my stepdad was visiting. Yeah. And so this is me laying in the last peg, and then Brett's going to talk right now. So let Brett talk. Brett, do you know what number barn this is for you? Oh, God, no. Have you lost count? Uh, yeah, I don't even. I've been doing it for 30 years. So what do you think? Timber, timber frames. And, yeah. Over 100, you think? Over 100 pieces? Yeah, probably. Probably, you know, 
right around 100 or nice. you know I mean yeah but you know it was a time when I was doing like two or three like this a year and two or three addition ports gazebo yes, pavilion yeah. you know do you know where the way. first one is you made yeah you do it's my house I'm living in it oh no kidding yeah, yeah that's a great story yeah. no I've, I've been doing carpentry for like yeah I've been in the trade since I was 16 and yeah. I, except for going to college and uh -huh. a couple years after when I figured out I didn't want to wear a suit and tie <laughs> and uh then uh I was kind of looking for a niche is doing most of the modeling work and I got the job to, to close in a timber frame and put the skin on and I remember driving up to it and I'm like holy shit this is the thing this is yeah. this is uh, yeah yes there's this nothing is cool. what I want to do there's nothing cool than this and so you know I said when I build my house I'm doing a timber frame right and it took about two years three years later I built my house and you know just really liked the work I said well this is what I'm going to do for you <laughs> And been doing it ever since. Everything's hand cut. Uh, well, you know, I use power tools. Right, but no CNC. No, no CNC. No, yeah. no, no. So uh, uh, power tools to get you know rough size, and every every joint gets a chisel or a slick or yeah. something to you know fine tune it. How do you sharpen your chisels? Diamond stone. Oh, that's it. Just water, water, yeah, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, a little water on the diamond stone. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just use diamond stones. I grind them once in a while, you know. You got it. You start getting it, yeah. you know, and you got to get them squared up again. And Do you ever buff them after you're done? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I strop them and buff them. Yeah, that's what I do too. You know, the le leather, So I, I don't even know what the leather does, but it does something. Yeah, it breaks that little curl off, supposedly, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then I use, I've got, uh, I got a, like a felt wheel with some chrome. Yeah, that's what chromium I Chromium yeah. shit. That, that's what I use. Yeah, yeah, nice. do the back and mirror finish on the back. Are you working on anything else right now? Um, I got, I'm waiting on timbers. The, the next, it's really cool. It's for an outdoor pavilion and it, it, it's a gable, but the gable goes in a horseshoe shape. So there's a bunch of principal rafters and these curved purlins that create- Is this. that what I saw on your Instagram? No. There was a curved piece on your side. Oh yeah, that was a that was another per, oh. pergola type of thing. Right. That was actually I, I, one that I cut for Dan. It was one of his clients. Right. But this is um it, it, it's gonna be a cool cool frame, you know. It's 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 I don't Is know. that the concept that's a horse barn shaped like a horseshoe? Yeah, is well it's it... just this big yeah, horseshoe shaped roof. And it's for an outdoor it covers an outdoor kitchen. It's the architect that I've worked with you know, over the years, a couple times. Do you like architects? Yes and no. Every time there's an ar architect on the job, it comes out good, it's nice, it looks yep. great, it always looks good, but they're a pain in the ass. They, 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 don't, they don't get what goes on in the field. Right. And if they would only consult a little bit, right. we could pretty much give you 99% of what you want, but make it 100% easier. Right. Are you happy with this one? Oh, yes, very. I yeah. didn't see how you didn't have to make any adjustments the entire time. I didn't adjust one pen and you missed yesterday. That was just a tad high. So have you do you design? I know you and Taylor were going back and forth, yeah. but I didn't pay close, close attention. Is there is every one of these joints designed in a program or do you just have it in your head? Yeah, oh yeah, in my head. But you look at her drawing, I know she did a drawing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, that I, gives I, you the I start. got the basic proportions of what she was looking for and mm. what was here. Right. And then I tweaked that a little bit right. to to put joy, you know, so I didn't get too much joinery in one spot. And so there's technically no drawing for this. Technically, no. aside from the CGI thing she did, but that doesn't give you the yeah, shape that, of the joints or anything. No, right? No, no, no. I do that right. I do that in the shop. Like what sill goes over what? Yeah, what yeah, joins yeah, what? Uh, That's yeah. not in the CGI. No, no, right. no. <laughs> there's no shop drawing for each one. I, no. But like I said, those are those are methods that I've kind of come up with that keep me um, on track and not messing things up. So. Good work, man. I just want to say thanks on camera. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah, no problem. Good work. Thank you. Good work. Good. You didn't kill Taylor. She didn't kill you. So. <laughs>